The following presentation is brought to you by TournamentPokerEdge.com. I spew forth a bunch of internet garble, and Joe translates it into something that everyone can really understand. Welcome to Poker Road Radio, featuring the very best in pokertainment. There are two people here with cards. Do I recognize you? Nope. Do I recognize you? Nope. Every single co-host I've ever had on the show has hung me out to dry. Fuck bluffing. I was merging stuff. <laughs> and now, today's Poker Road host, Joe Stapleton. I can't wait to be hung out to dry today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Poker Road Radio, brought to you by Tournament Poker Edge Professional MTT Training from the top live and online pros. Your hosts today are Jessica Wellman and myself. I'm a guy who prefers to read about position in the Kama Sutra. <laughs> I'm Joe Stapleton. Thank you, John Wong. Aren't you leaving someone out? I am. Not yet. Just hold on a second. There's oh, a whole plan I'm here. Sorry, I'm There's sorry. There's a whole plan. I'm sorry. I thought speaking you were being rude, and I wanted to Speaking of being hung out the, the dry, I can't even get through the intro. Yeah, I'm sorry. get out I'll your clothesline, Jessica Woman. Without Jeez. being steamrolled. We are coming to you from the 2011 Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure from here at Atlantis in the Bahamas. Coming up on today's show, we're going to recap some of yesterday's super high roller action. The final table is set. And we'll be talking to two of those final table competitors in Nick Shulman and Eugene Kachalov. Once the best of friends, now they're the bitterest of enemies, and they're squaring off today at the final table. But first, they will square off here on this show. We will get to a bit of the discussion on Prolod Freeman and UB signing. We'll talk a little bit how I'm the worst poker player alive. <laughs> I realized this last night. Oh, you played last night? I did a little bit. But first, I'd like to welcome to the show special guest host, the only man, woman, child, bot, or otherwise to ever win three W Coops. The guy's such a big deal on Poker Stars that he has a restaurant named after him here at the PCA. Ryan Golfa D'Angelo. What's up, buddy? What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's, a, it's an honor. I mean, this is like playing basketball with Michael Jordan or going to a oh club with a situation. I mean, <laughs> Poker Road Radio. Thanks so much. Yeah, I, I had the uh, sign changed at Casa D'Angelo. Last year, so you know that you're uh, you're not being paid to be here, right? You're being far too kind for a guy that's volunteer for a poker I mean, player to get up at eleven. You're, you're famous. I mean, come on, you're getting Nick Shulman and Eugene Ketchloff the day of the final table. They're probably like loving to be here. Huge, it's pulls. an honor. Huge pulls. Golfo, what have you been up to lately? What have I been up to? Have you to? not won a W Coop this week or what? No W Coops. This week. He even wins them when they aren't running. That's how good he is. I just want to put this mic a little closer to you. There you go. I, yeah, you got to get it close. Um, I've been chilling, you know, playing a little online poker, poker stars here and there. Um, have a girlfriend in I was Brooklyn say, now. You're hanging out with a girl. Yeah, have a girlfriend now. Um, locked down a little bit. Been go- going to Brooklyn a lot. She's actually in Australia right now on her way back. Twenty four hour or twenty two hour flight. That, what was that she doing in crazy. Australia? Uh, in Adelaide. Oh. Yeah, her uncle is the dean of Adelaide University, so. Which is like a pretty big deal. She's on a little right? holiday. Yeah. Now, how did you meet your girlfriend? This is all like there's some weird poker hookups and yeah, matchmaking yeah. going on, right? Yeah, give thanks to John Aguiar. He he was uh, responsible for two big match makes this year, first of which was with Lucky Chewy, who is at the final table today. Wait, Andrew he's taking credit for... Chewy dating your stepsister. Actually, that's that might be that more. This that, be you? that might be more me. It was, <laughs> it was at the Doyle Brunson I know, uh, beer pong tournament this summer, and Chewy drunkenly met Katie. I mean, wait, how is it possible it that really, John it even was remotely gets credit for? Him, I know Lockie you Chewy brought her up with to the stepsister. thing. Well, they were both at the pool party where I met my girlfriend at rehab. Oddly enough, so I can always be like, I met my girlfriend in rehab, which is kind of a funny story. The the pool at Hard Rock. Yes. Yeah, so now, did rehab. you meet your girl? You met your girlfriend at rehab. Is she like a rehab party girl? Like, <laughs> no, no, no she's, actually, you know, the girl I'm at the absolute opposite. Rehab? Yeah. <laughs> can her, I be honest? I have a little girl crush on Ryan's Kelsey, girlfriend. Yeah, she's she is sweet, the most but, adorable bundle yeah. of hipster. Ever, she, yeah, she's, her, she's a bundle of hipsters. She knows she us. She's ironic she's like, t-shirts. She's and, like bubbly I'm, and very cute, but it's got like the hipster vibe. She actually lives in like the hipster capital of the world in uh, Williamsburg in Brooklyn, which is where I'm moving in March. So I'll be getting my dose. Oh, Gloria Balding's here. Hi, Gloria. Gloria Balding was looking also very a early that she '90s loves. Madonna today, yeah. if I do say so myself. She's graced us with her presence, but yeah, I'm moving to Brooklyn, and uh, yeah, Kelsey's great and. Yeah, she's not a rehab girl. She was just visiting Steve O'Dwyer, who lives in Vegas, and I love Steve. The, I have a man crush on Steve O'Dwyer. So. Yeah, he cut his hair off come. though. I, I mean, with his mojo, he still has his mojo. That's what I mean. Okay, I <laughs> hope so. 
Now, you were telling me last night that you don't even really play that much poker. Oh, well, yeah. I, I'm not as much of a grinder as, like, some of the kids coming up these days who just play, like, 36 tables and, like, grind out Supernova. Yeah, we had Lex on the show yesterday. Supernova so. Elite. Yeah, Lex knows all about that. And, uh, yeah, I think that might be bad for your live game, though, if you watch Lex play on TV sometimes. He might be a little bit too crazy. <laughs> it's impatient, but... Oh uh, yeah, so I I try and play every weekend on Sundays. Like that's when all the big tournaments are. So I play some cash games during the week. But yeah, I like taking it easy and playing when I want to play. And I think that helps my win rate, I guess. And are you doing anything keeps else? Keeps me motivated. I mean, you're yeah. a professional poker player. You're not playing professional anything poker else. player. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I do anything else. I crochet a little bit during the week. <laughs> you sell your things at a craft fair <laughs> after they bust out on the Sundays. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. when you say you play the Sundays, like, how many tournaments are you playing? Are you just playing the big ones, like the million? Yeah, I, I don't play, like, I play the $50 rebuy. That's probably the smallest one I play, maybe a $50 freeze-out. But, like, all the $100, $100 freeze-outs, $100 rebuy, million, Sunday warm-up, all those. Are you playing any live poker? Uh, yeah, I try and travel as much as possible. Um, so what's I'm up? What's your, what's your biggest live score at this point? Last, be here, last right? yeah, last year here I came in fifth place at the PCI. So, so there could be a potential repeat performance here. I hope so. Table. If my jacks can hold up this year, I lost two huge pots last year with pocket jacks, but maybe they'll hold up this year. We'll see. And you're playing your day one tomorrow, right? Day one tomorrow. Yep. It's very exciting. I mean, for for those of you that aren't here right now, it's beautiful down here in the Bahamas. I mean. Poker Stars has all their pictures set up in the lobby. You, you walk towards the poker room, and there's just looks like a scene from What Lies Beneath or something. All the Poker Stars people with that's their exactly white. I know. I was like, like that's actually. exactly that's the great I, I mean, I mean, you walk in and you see Elky making this face like his mom just took away his StarCraft CD. He's like screaming, and they're like showing his cavities and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Like you, you definitely could have airbrushed that one, Poker Stars. Come on now. Then you have like. You have Lex Veldhaus running his fingers through his hair and, like, down you on the ground. You're playing peekaboo. It's d Dub's photo's pretty badass, too. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, David yeah. Williams. He's, he's like, a- popped the collar and given, like, he he's, either as needs Tyra to- Banks would say, he's smiling with his eyes. He's totally schmizing sm- in the I thing. Mean, I think in Lex's photo, you can even tell, like, he's sarcastic even in his he's photo. He's like, like, I can't believe I'm sarca- doing this. Yeah. He's leveling the photographer. He's, he's definitely the leveling yeah. the photographer. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's great. I think d Dub. I love David Williams, he's a good friend of mine, but he's got to get a hair, he's like got to get his hair under control. You see, it? it's like whoosh. anyway. I, I mean, I've I've noticed it as well. I've, it's I, it's beautiful hair. I think yeah. If I had if I had a hair, hair that good, maybe I would just let it go wild. Also, uh, Liv's photo, of course, is, oh, Liv is yeah, gorgeous, she and uh, she brought up a good point last night that when people bust out of the tournament, hers is the first one. <laughs> She's nerdy, nerdy, nerdy. Yeah, that they're gonna see is just her, like yeah. with the come hither look over her shoulder. Yeah, you just have. I bet they would poor... make most of them feel better. You think no? so? I think I'd be like, "Fuck you!" That would be the, the first face I see. <laughs> Fuck you! That's what I'm saying. I, I think that's good placement. You'll have all these sad nineteen-year-olds coming out, and they're like, "There is hope in life." Sad in more ways than one. Now you, <laughs> golf. You were playing some cash game action last night. Oh though. my god! Don't remind me. Um, row, row. Did it, it get worse it, for you after? Yeah, I Yeah, in the last, I was down like thirty five hundred bucks at five ten, and in the last hour of the night, I was only down like five or six hundred. I'm like, all right, sweet, making a comeback, and oh, then no. just gave it all away the last hour. Didn't give it away. Just ran into some bad situations, but you know that happens. So the the I've been played already. Oh my god! Yes, yes, the action's great. For was Stapes you, at your table? Nope, Stapes was not, but he was... Stapes at a 5 he was, table. I would have had to win the lottery first. <laughs> he was quick to tell me about his mishaps at his sit-and-go, which we, we'll probably hear oh, about no. shortly. Unfortunately, they didn't have a $10 sit-and-go. <laughs> that I and the smallest I could find was a 120 <laughs> And I find that I can play good poker, for, but for maybe, like, I max out at, like, 50, 55 minutes... Is like the absolute so, yeah. longest I can play good poker for. Yeah, I hear you, man. And then I do, I do. Is that how, coincidentally how long your massage lasted at the same? It's year? exactly what. I, <laughs> I, was I'm, the massage more expensive than the buy-in? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, actually, the don't, massage. Don't lie. The, no, here's the thing. All right, I need to, I need to to talk to some people get massages because 
The only guys that I know that get massages are like the super high rollers, and it obviously doesn't matter. To so them. you're trying to be like them. Yeah, of course I am. Yeah. And, oh, Golfa, by the way, says that, that it's plus EV to get a massage because it is. it's intimidating yeah. to the other players They're at the like, table. Oh, what a boss playing this $120 This is where Stapes calls me a curmudgeon, but I don't like being touched. I can't afford, <laughs> I can't afford, <laughs> yeah, I can't afford any bigger than $120 sit and go, but I will dust off 170 on a massage during yeah, that sit and go. That might hurt your wing, right? <laughs> But I'm always I'm like real superstitious about massages because I can't think of anything more awkward, and it happens to me every time than busting while you're getting the massage. She's like giving you the upper spine massage, and you just look down at aces. You're like, just stay there, stay there. Don't yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I don't want to go broke. So what happened was I was like, and then I, you know what? Like I can't look like a baller no matter what because like eventually I'm like I start sweating how long it's been going on for, like how much I'm gonna owe. I thought you were gonna say you you start sweating. And no, no, no. That, <laughs> that would be a concern too, though. I would think. I can at least, although know. Uh, not in there because it's like yeah, subarctic. It but I don't have any issues like with that sort of thing. I'm a cool, calm, collected guy. There's no like I don't like get sweaty or nervous or whatever. <laughs> However, I do get sweaty or nervous over how much it's going to cost me in the end. And so I eventually said they were like, "Hey, how long have we been going for?" And she's like, "35 minutes." I'm like, <laughs> okay, great. See, that makes me look like the anti baller. Like they, Daniel's never like, "Uh, how much have I spent?" No, I'm going to have over 100 because uh, <laughs> nope. I want to make sure I have enough cash left to give you a tip. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I'm cashing in this tournament. Yeah. So I go, all right, let's 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 go 40 minutes then. And uh, seriously, at the 40-minute mark is when I just decided that I was going to completely go brain dead. And I decided to call Ray's out of position with 7-6 offsuit. And I said, if I hit any pair, I'm just shipping the flop. What, you just defended? Good strategy, yeah. Yeah, and then it came ace high, and I shipped the flop. And had ace queen and thought about it forever. Oh, I love the slow rolls that you get in, in the hundred twenty. Yeah, in the hundred twenty dollars mm-hmm. sit and go. And I was like, the guy was like thinking about it, counting out ships. I'm like, put you on ace king. I was like, maybe he has kings and he might fold. Like, and I'm just yeah. like, what? What? what I love doing? that it's only after you ship it in that you're like, hey, that maybe I think about fold. what he might have. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't. I don't what Did do you I have care? anything? No draw or anything? I mean, I had a two pair draw. Oh, you, you flopped a pair? Yeah, I flopped a pair of sixes. Oh, nice. Oh. Two pair draws are sneaky, actually. I like yeah, that. I call that the Raptor Double attack. gut shots and two pair draws are <laughs> the best. Were you the yeah. one who came up with the blind side, the Raptor the, suck out? The where Raptor it's attack. Like where you're you, looking for the heart and then the spades, straight hits yeah. and it comes out of nowhere and gets you? <laughs> it goes like this. It's like you see like the guy's got a, a flush draw, like a spade draw, and then he goes runner, runner straight on you. And you're like, oh, man, I didn't even see that was out. <laughs> or he goes runner, runner, two pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, yeah, no, that's the raptor See, attack. The thing that worries me about massages is, like, she'll start giving you a massage, and I'm, like, less prone to want to make a big bluff or all in or whatever because I don't want to bust. Like, right. Five minutes after they, they're like, yeah, I'm like, sorry, we're done here. Uh, I know you just got here. I, but pull, well, I, I, I have yeah. seen the people pull the, <coughs> let's, let's just move six oh, chairs over that. and continue the I, massage. I think that's I don't so that. weird to be at an empty table getting a massage, like, not playing poker. I find it odd. See, I go did that a, once because I didn't want to. What's wrong with you? Believe it or not, the chair massage is way cheaper than the spa. Mm-hmm. Here, at least. There are yeah, other right. places where the, the spa is a little bit uh, more reasonable. But sure yeah, I did that in the Caesars tournament one time. Like, I just wanted to. I was, like, so embarrassed that I went bust in the tournament <laughs> that my one way of, like, saving face, where I was just like, all right, let's take it over there. Let's take the massage You're over like there, please. You're, stumbling, picking up your bag. You, like, knock your coffee over. That's something I also... Now, Ryan, you obviously have more experience playing online tourneys than you do playing live tourneys, but I always find it's so awkward when you bust. Like, you always trip over something. Uh, there's... Like, picking your bag up, or you leave something behind, or, like, you go to push your chair you in. Can you can never find that long. right spot to put your drink under your chair. There's always a leg that hits it, or the waitress hits it, or... Yeah, and just when you, when you bust out, like, just that... That getting up from the it's table, so there's awkward. always some sort the, of snafu. The chair legs stick on the carpet, and you're just like, exactly. Give me the f- and you're out like, of here. you're like kind of shaky. Yeah. You don't really know what's going on. And then I also, when I bust out of online tournaments, I'm awkward because I'm trying to click that X <laughs> as far away. As you finish the tournament in 1,040 second place, and then you're like, okay, good, get out of my face, get out of my face, yeah. Fuck you get out of my face. And then you try to click it off, and they're like, you're playing in a tournament. Would you like to quit? I'm like, no, I'm not playing in a tournament. Yeah, see, here's what I do. When I see I've lost, I just instantly click the closed table and that doesn't even pop up. Is that what it so is? You see, okay. you see the river card and you just go boom and oh, it's gone. Be- before you even are and eliminated. Don't even give him a chance. Yeah. See, this is why I gotta get online poker yes. advice yeah. from golf. Here. How to lose a poker tournament effectively All about by preparing Golfa. to lose, not how to get better. <laughs> yeah. Now, golf. I did have a question for the, from the rail 
that came in last night. A kid uh, that I met was a huge Poker Road fan. How at the attractive bar last night. is Joe Stapleton in person? <laughs> <laughs> it's beyond. It's beyond comparison. <laughs> it's, it, it cannot be put into words. Um, <laughs> this kid named Joe Epolito is like a huge fan. He's like a supernova on Poker Stars, and like freaked out when he realized who I was. And I told him you were guest co-hosting today. And he said that he wanted to get your opinion. Now, hopefully you'll understand this question because I wrote it on a cocktail napkin, but I left it in my room. Okay. Which, by the way, is always an awesome scene, Jessica, when you're in a bar and you're talking to a dude and you're like, let me take out this cocktail napkin and write down something you're telling me. It looked like I was getting his number. You get guys' phone numbers. Yeah, exactly. He said that he wanted to know what you thought of the fact that they've changed the amount of Big blinds that you buy in for that there are like the twenty five to forty buy in tables. Oh yeah, no more short stacking. Yes, I mean now explain explain. Wait, because they got rid of twenty to fifty. No, they ha- still have twenty to fifty, but but they've separated them. Yes. they now have deeper stack tables. Oh yeah, or you see little in like parentheses what the blinds. Yeah, are. yeah. Um, I personally, I think that's absolutely great for poker for years the online community has been complaining about short stackers blah blah blah, and we really haven't had the option all the games were 20 big blind minimum buy-in and there were people that were making a lot of money just exploiting people who were raising too loosely and going all in for 20 big blinds and not having to play any poker because it's just easy decision so they can play 45 tables and if they have a hand they can go all in with they just show they're just shipping most yeah of the time. so I mean, I I personally don't think that's what the game is meant to be, and a lot of other people share that sentiment with me, so I think it is a good addition. Can I do a shapeless plug really quickly? Please do, Jessica. That's that's one of the things, by the way, golf is the same thing for you. Like, you guys come on here, you share your time. By all means, anything you want to plug, go for it. Uh, It's not Ryan's opinion, but if he's looking in the January issue of Bluff, there is an interview with your good friend, Ryan, Brent Roberts, where he talks about... Why he chooses to short stack table cash game PLO yeah. over the deeper stacks, and now, why Bre- you would choose to short stack to play the short stack tables over the other. I, I think when Brent plays short stack, he plays more of like fifty big blind, which is not like super short. So there's yeah, and, and Potlam in Omaha, you, twenty big blinds, you can even yeah. play a lot more post swap. But um, yeah, you definitely can have a bigger edge uh, with a shorter stack, and the decisions are just easier when you're playing two hundred big blinds deep with. Some of the good Palomaroma players are no limit. You have a lot of tougher decisions, and and then you can easier, get yeah. deep at that table so and you have you and do. have right, that right. advantage the over the shorter tables stacks. Don't have, a, don't have a cap on the pot, so there can be people. With, yeah, like you can get up to yeah. a bunch of big blinds, which is then, what happens. There's yeah. a lot more action because people aren't so afraid to put the money in. on the Yeah, show. so you're saying that my dreams of of uh, being able to take my whole bankroll and going into a, uh, a cash game. And playing one big blind are probably never going to happen. Yeah. Sorry. Ah, damn. Oh, damn. All right, we got to take a quick break right now. I've got some some plugs when we get back. Uh, really quick before we go, don't forget that the Poker Road League is kicking off San- Sunday, January 16th. That's on Broadway tables, $33 buy in tournament. Also, tournamentpokeredge.com, gift certificates, no contract, month to month. Give the gift of positive EV here in the new year. Poker Road Radio, back after this. Welcome back to Poker Road Radio, brought to you by Tournament Poker Edge, professional MTT training from the top live and online pros. Right now, it's time for our tournament recap segment. Yesterday, they had day two of that super high roller 100K buy-in event. Yesterday, Biggest tournament ever, right? At like in this hemisphere, at least, I know. Is that Australia what? has never gotten that many, and right. it's 100000 Australian dollars, so it's not it quite, seems, it's a little less. But. It seems absurd to me to just put up $100,000 on one poker Okay, game. Ryan, that was going to be my question for you. What, how how deep is your bankroll going to have to be before you're playing a 100K tournament? Uh, there can't be more than eight people in this tournament who have 100% of their own action. Everybody I was going to say, I think Guy is themselves. the only one that yeah. is properly rolled to be playing like, this event. Buy a house, play a sit and go. What should I do? <laughs> <laughs> That's Come on now. I know one of the other. floor yeah. staff and I were in disgust, just like, do you realize this is like two years of work? Where for are us? they gonna where are they gonna draw the line? 
Oh, 500k buy in next year. Super duper high roller. What if you guys I asked like- Nick Schulman, and I was like, so when, you know, at what point did you say, all right, I'm going to take the plunge and play $100,000? He's like, pretty much as soon as they announced it. I'm a pretty sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all right then. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely some guys that are sick fucks. And I noticed there. there's no full tilt pros here either, which. <laughs> no team full tilt. No team full red tilt. Red pros are here, though. Nick Schulman okay. is a red pro. Right, so. right, right. And so, Chewy is also a right. Right, Chewy. Why? Why though? Why can't they get over that whole? Don't you think some of it is like dick swinging in a way? Yeah, seriously. Like get. I, come like to think of it, there were no girls in this event, right? There were no girls. <laughs> I kind of understand it though because why? Uh, I think that when Phil Ivy and Tom Dwan show up at these things, it makes it a story. You know, when Phil Ivy shows up at something, just him showing up tends right. to make. So why are you going to purposefully give that? promotion to the competition's event. I, I think there's more value in having the tournament be 60 players rather than 38 players. Yeah, for the you... greater good of poker, yes. I but it is a poker star's and also, event. Right, yeah. And then also, you know, it's not like Phil winning this event would make or break his career either. Oh, Phil probably wouldn't come. But you know what I mean? Would. Like, either well, one of these Phil, guys... Phil comes for the main event, right? He did last year. I yeah. don't know if he is for I this mean, or not. What if he won that tournament? I'd be very surprised to see I him. I was surprised he didn't win that tournament. <laughs> <laughs> he well, made a run in it, didn't he? he made uh, cash yeah, or I think he cashed. Yep, he did. Now, this he is something cashed. that never happened, but it, if you guys remember, Jessica, this may have been before your time. And Ryan, how old are you? 25. You're 25, so yeah. it's pretty close to right around when you were at least becoming legal here in the States. Was, um, I think, in 06 in the, in the mansion poker. Heyday. Mansion Poker made a lot of people rich. Mansion Poker? Yeah, they, yeah, they had the Mansion Poker like showdown oh, or something. Oh, right, right, right. They had the Poker Dome was the Mansion yes. Poker thing. It Thank was you, Eric Fast right. from Card yeah. I used to watch <laughs> every poker show except that one. I just couldn't. Yeah. It was awful. That one was yeah. kind of brutal. And you know what was happened? that the one where they had like 10 second time limits? And the like, red there was, there was a speed one. Yeah. Was, was, one towards them. was one of the shows they had in the yeah. Poker Dome was the Speed Poker. And... Uh, what happened was the Mansion Poker contracted three years of doing that show, mm-hmm. and they only did like half a season, and <laughs> a lot of people got paid for the full three years. Oh, that's like some good TV, business. Yeah, right crazy there. TV production, <laughs> pay or play contracts they had, Jessica, who went to film and television school at USC. Um, you another, did? Another plug do, for do, you. Do, 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 Is that the USC fight yeah. song? I have no idea what the fight song was for I, you. I just want to hear <laughs> I was I an annoying fan. Were you really? I am I the worst. That. I can see the that. The worst. Were you like a face painter, like chest letters, Well, I was in the band freshman years? year. I did the color guard. What instrument did you play? The color guard. Oh, color guard. I was a flag. Oh. That's awesome. You're a flag twirler? I would love to really I did football dance band for a year, and then I did, basket- <laughs> I did basketball band for three years, mostly because I wanted a front row seat at the basketball I'm trying to get I'm trying to get in touch with my creative side. Maybe you could help me. But yeah, I'm. You're I'm, one of the best dancers I've ever seen. Right? <laughs> so, good boy. Right. Anyway, where I was going with that story is that Mansion Poker had this huge party at, at the Sky Bar in Los Angeles, at a where, mansion. where I was sent by Card Player Magazine, one of my only official assignments there, and uh, they announced this million dollar sit and go, and they were going to have uh, six players all put up a million dollars, winner take all, and then they're like, we have our first. Our first competitor signed up and ready to go, and Chris Rose was the MC for the thing, and they had all this smoke and drum roll, and then they had this doorway that someone wheeled out. It was really weird, this like little <laughs> doorway, and all Just this the smoke. Door. And yeah, and Phil Ivy comes walking out of the doorway, and like, we have the first, and everybody's like, "Ob, Phil right. Ivy, <laughs> Phil Ivy," and I don't think a single other person ever signed up for it. The thing never happened. Mansion Poker kind of went away. But, uh, Phil Ivy playing heads up against himself, like practicing a, ping pong with the table up. A quarter million dollar one in Monte Carlo. Are they? There's some like IPPA business. I mean, if it happens, I'll die of shock. Yeah. But uh, supposedly, and That's they're th- running amazingly satellites at the bike. Okay, <laughs> like you can oh, like yeah. satellite your way in for two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, Forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> Just a thousand, ten thousand easy payments of forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> but yeah, these are absurd. So yeah, um, so this is the the uh, the biggest tournament of all time. What, what do you? What, uh, what, uh, yeah, what I mean, I was surprised to hear that. They're just going with the 100K. They just went for it. I mean, they have a 25K high roller. I've still never played a 25K. That seems that's so much money. <laughs> Come on, now. I like Thank that, you for you're, being that you're reasonable. Yeah, that's uh, it's actually well, kind but, of a, well, unpopular. You know, these guys. 
probably all piece themselves yeah, out the, to each other. Right, so right. you're basically investing your 100k across a third of the field with exactly, the hopes that yeah. you get your money back. Yeah, I, I know people who have sold 95 percent of themselves just to play it. That happened in the 50k this summer too. Oh really? I was yeah. surprised to hear Nick said he. He has half of himself, and I was like, half of yourself? That's an well, awful lot. Think about it. To play a $100,000 buy-in on your own, Yeah, they I, say you need to have, like, 100 buy-ins or something. What's that? $10 million? $10 million. Dollars? I don't know what to make people with $10 million. dying. Millions. We don't care. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's like $10 million, huh? I was just uh, choking over that dollar amount. Yeesh. <laughs> it's a lot for me. Yeesh. <clears throat> Man, that's a lot of voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Um, but amazingly, for 100K, action flew by yesterday. People busted out like it was their jobs. Yeah, Six yeah. hours to get from 23, and we actually got down to seven instead of eight. Yeah, people are, are not scared. There is that Bahamas factor, I think, a lot of the time, right? Like, Let's get I'm to the sorry, beach. There's, there's no locale factor that yeah. would get me to punt in a $100,000 <laughs> there's, no, there's no jet ski EV. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, anyway, it's also the, the biggest uh, bubble of oh, all yeah. time. And we had this discussion, I believe. Five, yeah, we verified pay, that right? like, there have been 200K bubbles in the Aussie millions one. But if you think of the value of the Aussie dollar, this one is That's slightly right. so this is And this is televised, right? Well, I guess well, that so is too. Two maybe. of them will get to be on TV, but they will have no money. I was going to say, yeah. there's going to be two guys who all they get for making a final table of a 100K event will be their... Five thousand dollar patch TV patch bonus. Deal, yeah, yeah, and one of the guys is an like a businessman. The two short stacks oh, yeah. are Chewy and the businessman. The businessman. I don't think the businessman's I'm gonna not have a, a patch business on. Man, I'm a businessman. So anyway, yeah, Jessica is right in saying that things ended very early yesterday. Six hours. Yeah, but that's well, all it took. It was like what, uh, which made it six o'clock at night, basically. The levels yeah. levels well, were only an hour, so I think it went. I mean, the blinds are pretty high right now. Twelve k, twelve twenty four, and the shortest stacks like three seventy. Yeah, Chewy's got like three seventy. Uh, part of it is Nick Schulman just picked up aces at the best times ever, over and over Did again. He? Oh, I didn't. He no, I read up, about one time where he uh, busted two Jay, players. Uh, Jason Mercier had queens, ran into Nick's aces, and then Nick, he f- like it, the hands. You should go on. Poker Stars blog or Poker News, or, or we can talk history. about it uh, with Nick in a few minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah. That he got in a three-way all-in with Vivek, Tobias, Rankin Meyer, and himself with him having aces uh. again. And then you just had a lot of like cooler situations. I think. Oh, we need to ask Eugene what he laid down in this big hand against Daniel. He okay, you re- tell us, you remember that? That's okay. We're gonna. We're um, gonna um, I wonder if Nick and Eugene anyway. talk about stuff like that. Like I'm sure they do. In hands, they played against they each other. They were kind of like schoolgirls. It was these cute because they were at the questions. same table, yeah. like Stop. whispering sure to shut each the other. F up. No, not at all. I just <laughs> want you. I don't want you to shut the f up now. But I want you to make sure that you ask these things. It's so bizarre. Like when you're doing an interview with someone, you sit there and you're like, "Fuck, I have no idea what to say." But like when you're, you're like, when you're sitting here and like where? just chatting with your friends. That's when you're like, wow, I wonder this. I wonder that. Please, by all means, ask those questions of those fellows when they're on. I'm going to admit it too, so you remind me. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, but it's a really good final table. I'm a Nick and Eugene. Yeah, so let's make sure that we ask those questions of uh, of Nick and Eugene when they're in here. Uh, but yes, to go back to yesterday's tournament. Uh, so we've got Daniel Negreanu is uh, second in chips. He at this is second point. behind yeah. Nick. Eugene is third. But there's a bit of a drop off. Nick and and Daniel are very much at the top, and then Eugene's up in there. Uh, Oh, BrynKenny.com is there. <laughs> Bryn Kenny is here. Bryn, Bryn Kenny, Kenny. Yeah. I love, and I love how the people are listed like that. Bryn, Bryn, Kenny, Kenny? Yeah. yeah. We need Bryn, to come, Bryn, Kenny, Kenny. There yeah. needs to be some sort of standardized rule for this. I just I'm sure you guys have these arguments all the time, right? I won't put it in. You won't put it in? Because I think it's stupid. But. Right. Yeah. Uh, even even if they're not like a red pro when I do Sunday results, if I know that it's like someone who's just it's Sean Deeb, I'm not gonna do Sean Sean Deeb Deeb. I'm just like Sean Deeb. We know. Yeah, that seems. Fine. I mean, I don't like to use this word because it's kind of derogatory. But retarded. Huh. Retarded. You know what I mean? This is um, who else is there? My internet suddenly just went all to hell, so I can't look it up. But <laughs> could be everyone's internet. Let's who's try it over line? here. I can. I can tell you the lineup. Chewy's a short stack. It's yeah. There's the businessman Chewy. It's uh. 
I'm. Oh, isn't Umberto still? Yes, in? Umberto is still in. Umberto. Now Umberto. I do not want to. His shark tactics might not work at this final table. I yeah exactly. He's he, like no, he's like staring at Eugene. Dies like the shark is coming for you. No, here's here's what <laughs> if shark. I was Umberto. And I'm not great at poker, so we can take this with a grain of salt. So you share that with Umberto. I watched, <laughs> I watched him cold four bet one time, and the mm-hmm. two people that had been the raise and the re-raise folded like they were sorry they ever looked at their cards in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's got a reputation got a for being image. a little bit nitty, and yeah. he should just take advantage of it. Now, I do not want to unfairly accuse anyone of anything, but I will say that a member of the media yesterday told me that Umberto was taking a very long time with his decisions yesterday as they were on the final table bubble and may or may not have even been taking a very long time with his very easy decisions. I heard... He, it seemed that like he unethical. thought a little more than a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, he was not the shortest stack, though, because uh, James Opst, he was, like, critical mass territory. But that's also when you have very easy decisions. You're either folding or you're moving all in. So yeah, he yeah. was just, like, pitch, he would just pitch them. Like. I, online guys don't do that because there's more value in seeing more hands than stalling, especially when you're not well, on, like, so a bubble without hand-for-hand players. Can I ask you this poker question? That, so James is at the four-handed table because they don't combine oh, at nine. Okay. He's at a four-handed table, and he's got, like, less than ten big blinds. Is there some value to stalling – Simply because the blinds are coming around so often. Were they playing hand for hand at this? point? No, because there's not a money bubble. So well, there's then, no yeah, hand for there's hand. definitely a sense in stalling. Then I think. I mean, I don't know the. I love that we're talking about. Can well, shouldn't you stall here? I know. No, I, I know. Mean, it's, it's not it's something still, I normally. I mean, it's still an do, interesting question. Let's leave the ethics out of it and just look at it from a purely logical standpoint. Because, Especially if there's a short stack at the other. Table. Because, uh, like Chewy and. Businessman whose name is Sandor Dengen. Sorry, Sandor. Sorry, Sandor, Sandor of Hungary. We love uh, you. <laughs> I'm sure you've done quite a few things Sand- in your life that I Mikey should be Sand- familiar Sand- with. <laughs> and, um, they're at the other table, five-handed, mm-hmm. and each hand's taking quite a while. Seeing flops, turns, and rivers because they've got people who are playing a little deeper over there. Yeah. And in the meantime, none of the hands at the four-handed table are going to a flop. If I'm James Oaks, I would kind of think about yeah, if I'm hemming a, and hawing a little bit over I'm some on, decisions. If I'm on the bubble of a $100,000 tournament with a short stack at a But table. you're not on the – you're on the TV yeah, bubble. Yeah, TV, which has value And he doesn't – well, no, because you can't – there's two full tilt guys already. So unless Chewy uh, doesn't okay. make it and they can't really sign people because of the way that these – you have to declare your affiliation first. Mm-hmm. Okay. Daniel and Umberto have poker stars Still, you're locked on TV. up. There's definitely value in that. There is, and he and James Opes is one that hasn't been on TV yeah, right, and could right. get and deservedly needs and this exposure. I don't exposure. think that's going to change his decision. But at yeah, all, but there might be some value in just taking taking your sweet old time. What your is a reasonable and ethical amount of time to take when you're in that situation? Do you Let's, have to act instantly? I don't know. We can discuss that, but I think it's there's no right answer. I mean, Ten some seconds. People, I don't know. I mean, it's such a and it's such a difficult thing to prove. Uh, you, too, you, you know? could like go hardcore and just wait until people call the clock on you to fold seven twos, but I don't think he's doing that. Well, no one clocked Umberto at that table, yeah. and it seemed. Did you think I, there were some situations where maybe I don't calling know. the clock on him was reasonable? I don't. I I know the last hand. Where James, we had simultaneous elimination. So the final table today is starting shorthanded. Yeah, yeah. Since it wasn't hand for hand because there wasn't a money bubble. Jungle Man and. Dan Cates was all in on yeah. one table. And um, on the other table, uh, James had shoved and Uberto had thought for something like four minutes. Jeez. And at this point, I think that James was probably got had like 150, 160 at 12:24, and Umberto was in the big blind or had he was the last person to act, so I think he was in the big blind with King Queen, and he thought for <laughs> several minutes. But it, it, it well, represented well, it, it represented it like a pretty decent. Or, it was yeah. probably half it's, a stack. It's still yeah, I mean, it's one of those spots where it's like if I'm in a $6 sit-and-go, right, I'm right, going to call right. really quickly. But right. I think Umberto especially has the most to gain from making and this TV James, table because he's become somewhat yeah. 
irrelevant in the American poker right. landscape and having this high profile thing happen is a big deal for him. You know, speaking of Umberto, um, Eric Fast yesterday from Card Player and Julio asked me a very interesting question and Eric said to me, what do you think that Umberto's lifetime tournament winnings are? And I said, Let's have like, Ryan guess because we know the answer. You know the answer. Um, I saw him on TV once in like 2001, I think. 2001? <laughs> or like when you were 14, you were watching poker and Alberto <laughs> Brennis was playing in the main event. I don't know, but he he made some fun too. I don't know. I would say lifetime winnings, three point one million. Five point six. Five point six. Five point six million dollars. He's been playing a long time. Yeah, and I mean he's he's and he has a remarkable record when you look at it. Like huge numbers of WSOP caches, caches yeah. in the main event, pretty much every yeah, year. Yeah, he does. Um, and now this, which. You know, I don't think going in, people thought that Umberto would be someone that you would necessarily see at this final table. Well, he's my pick to win the whole thing. <laughs> and that final table resumes in just a few hours at 1 p.m. today. But before that happens, we're going to talk to Nick Shulman and Eugene Kachlov coming yeah. up right after this for, break. And for those of you who don't know, those are two of the biggest bosses in the poker world. So very excited. That's to right. Have and they're on. New Yorkers, just like you're yeah, about okay. to be. Yeah. All right. All right. Poker Road Radio, we're going to take a break right now. That's right. When we get back, we're going to have Eugene Kachalov and Nick Shulman, Poker Road Radio. We got him so excited. (laughs) 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 Welcome back to Poker Road Radio, coming to you from the 2011 Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure. Right now, we're joined in studio by Eugene Kachalov and Nick Shulman. Two very special guests That's who right. have something to do in like 12 minutes. That's right. In 12 minutes, we're going to get them out of here. It's going to be <laughs> short and sweet. Uh, you know, I wanted to start off with a hearty congratulations until Eugene reminded me yesterday that you guys haven't even made the money yet. Yeah, that's true. Is it frustrating at all to have played for two whole days? Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, it's, on you, it's definitely the first final table that I've heard of that and <laughs> you don't even make the money. I know you guys are like best friends. Are you staying in the same room? Uh, no. We oh, okay. Does that, I feel like that'd be awkward if he knocked you out and you're, like, going to sleep and just want to smother <laughs> be aw- If you were staying in the same room, it'd be awkward enough anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> is one of you, is one of you uh, chainsaw snore or something? No. It's no, probably been a while just... since you guys have been at the stage where you needed to share a room. Mm, yeah, I guess that would be true. But in Europe, we've, we've roomed together a lot. Sometimes it's hard to get a room, so we can only get one room. Right. I find in Europe, even if you get two beds, the space between them oh, is sometimes fine, fine. That, that? that was what? the main concern. This we couldn't do this trip because yeah. uh, actually because they said they were they couldn't guarantee us two beds. I, I, I really <laughs> I never understood that. It's two twin beds against each other. Yeah, what? I don't get it. Me neither. Well, like, mm. There's not a, as much homophobia, I think, in Europe. Oh, They're all pretty cool not. with each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of deep V-necks. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys are. are uh, that's good. That's <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you guys Nick's, are. Nick's uh, neckline is not plunging too deep today. Good, good. That's a, I think that's a, a fair. No, neckline. John Raisner. Did anybody see his? He just. John Raisner just unbuttoned like six buttons at the main I, event final table. And uh, I, saw that. I saw that. I, I, I respected that. That's, that's showed a lot of heart. I think the, v, the the neckline is like directly proportional to the amount of hair you have. Like I wear my neckline like super high because as you can see, the neck beard just goes all the way no, down. Sense. Austin sense. Austin Powers unbuttoned it down here. Women loved his yeah, little soul patch. I don't think women right. really do love that. I'm guessing <laughs> Eugene's got a little hair going on. That, hence his, his, his got a little too much coming out. In the, in yeah, the exactly. Like a Russian bear. bear. My friends used to like call a, this look my, like Ron Jeremy, my Harry Potter. Uh, you know, you guys are the uh, part of the biggest money bubble of all time right now as well. Nick doesn't look too worried. Let's be honest. <laughs> he doesn't look too worried. I wonder why. Yeah. In every photo of you yesterday, too, you just seem like not all that concerned about everything. Just like, <laughs> no, oh. no, I am, I am. But um, I mean, obviously the the, the chip stack helps. But the the truth is, if you're going to be really concerned about bubbles in a tournament like this, you shouldn't really be in it. So I mean, it's mm-hmm. you know. That's sure, right. That's some point. harsh talk from Nick Shulman. Out. Sound advice. That's true. If you're, if you're paying 100000 to win 200000 it's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not the right way to go. It's not the right move for you. <laughs> and maybe you guys aren't comfortable answering this, but do both of you have 100% of yourselves? Like, we're, we're guessing there aren't a lot of people in this tournament who do. Um, I don't. I have yeah. about half. It's half? the same way. Yeah. You guys that's have half smart. of each other? Yeah. <laughs> What's no, 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 no. A couple percent. A like percent. always. Yeah. yeah, that's smart. Having $50,000 of yourself in a poker tournament is... 
I think Good enough investment. Seems like more I than think, enough. Yeah. More than enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys have any sort of saver bet between the two of you guys? Since uh, you are close friends, and there's we just do five uh, percent every tournament that we yeah. play. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's very common yeah. among yeah. poker friends. So there's no like. additional since you both made the final table. No, not no. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've spoken about it, but we didn't. Oh, know, we didn't you should do what they did on Poker After Dark at the final table. Do like a five hundred dollar no shuffle bet, so you can't shuffle your chips. And the first oh, man, person to shuffle, think I could play it like that. It's tough. <laughs> Durs yeah. sitting there with his hands folded on the hundred k. <laughs> it's yeah, so funny. That brutal. It was yeah. It was him, Ivy, and uh, Huck Seed, and obviously Ivy just like ripped his stack off and started shuffling like two minutes. <laughs> <into> the bet. <laughs> And then, and then won a three hundred and ninety thousand dollar pot while shuffling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Do you guys have any other props going? Uh, you know, you said that you're not switching more pieces, but is there anything going on at the tables? I know Phil there Locke should was be. paying people to find out their net worth. Yeah, he paid me for that one. He he, he, uh, he still owes me a thousand, but yeah, that's pretty funny. He's good for it, I'm sure. Anything else? Any props going no, on this I tournament? The hundred k is enough. <laughs> I think it's enough. That's enough. Let's take. <laughs> All right, well, I know the difference between an interview and, like, a couple of guys, like, sitting around talking about poker. What were your conversations yesterday as soon as the final table was set? What hands were you guys talking about? I think more than hands. What should we get for dinner? Uh, I think more than has just talking about how awkward it is that we're both in the final table. You can't really discuss like strategy, I guess. I see. I was asking about that. I wonder if they're talking about hands. I'm like, Eugene's probably not telling Nick about hands they played together. I no, would imagine. We, no, we do. Oh, that. you do? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, we don't like that. We actually do. We yeah. Talk okay. Hands, but just I guess like more like there won't be any like strategy discussion. I guess. Right. You right. know, during the during the game, which is kind of awkward. Right. Game, right. So what what hands did you guys talk about yesterday? A few really small pots we got into. I asked him what he had. He asked me what I had. Nothing like, nothing too interesting. You guys didn't play any big pots together. No, nothing we played. Big, no. We played a few, you know, pots of Just moderate size, which he whatever, won yeah. every single one. <laughs> yeah, it was more me asking him what you have in a very threatening. Not like <laughs> <laughs> you better tell me, you asshole. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna smother you in your sleep if yeah, you don't tell pretty, me pretty, what yeah. you had again. Well, I think a lot of people want to know what you had on the Benjamin elimination hand. Are you able to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I had, I had two jacks. You had two jacks, okay, yeah. because, uh, you know, the, the consensus was that you may have had two queens, and your reaction when the queen hit was a typical right, Eugene right. Kachalov reaction. <laughs> you just kind of, like, shrugged your shoulders, <laughs> and yeah. I wouldn't have put it past you to have that same nonchalant reaction had you had two queens. It's like, possible. I, I feel like you, I mean, obviously you're not supposed to react to the flop, but yeah. I don't really see you, like, flipping the table over. No, I definitely wouldn't, but. I think with two queens, I probably played the same way. Probably would have taken an extra five minutes, fucking <laughs> <laughs> time, and more torture. But probably would have folded anyways. Yeah, but would have been tougher. And uh, that was it. You guys were sitting next to each other, right? Oh, uh, not a at that, while. Not at that table. Only, yeah, no, only yeah. towards the end. And was that when you guys mostly had your pots that you played? Um, we played really like three yeah. pots. It was really, it was not, and some of them were just nothing pots you'd never remember because we're such close friends. Though I mean, there's like a right. blind to blind. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we don't play with each other ever. So, but really, nothing too interesting. You guys have that telepathy where you go, "Hey, how about that one?" He's like, "Kings." <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right, well, Nick. I want to talk to you for a second about the world of Jenks. You were uh, very open on that show. Some very personal stuff came out. Were you happy with the way that it ended up turning out? I was pretty happy. I mean, uh, they. You know, they edited it a bit. To, uh, it wasn't really a, so much of an accurate representation of the week we spent together. Mm. I mean, it was a very small part of right. our You're interaction that they took that kind of storyline and went with it. But that's okay. And um, I was, I mean, it's true, you know, to a certain extent. I think I'm a much more balanced person than I appeared on the show. Right, I mean, they have to make it as dramatic as possible for television. Little known fact, actually, I interviewed for that show. Went to the MTV studios, yeah, did the whole interview process, like... You're not so, f- nearly fucked up enough. To I, I know. I'm not nearly <laughs> handsome enough, smart enough, <laughs> no, cool no, enough. No, 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 it's not all <laughs> Keep that, the list man. going. You did a really good I job. I think it, that, all the things you mentioned, if you had somehow been more fucked up, then maybe you probably could have gotten yeah, it. I, there, <laughs> yeah. There has to be the drama element for sure. And, I yeah. mean, there's more drama in you driving yellow Corvettes around and it's going funny too to Europe I did. for 100K cash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have been just like playing golf. Yeah. Betting twenty dollars. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, I'd rather watch that. Than <laughs> <you know>. <laughs> <laughs> What's something that didn't make it there that you wished had? Probably just a, being a nice of, to my mom. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> there was a. I own a little piece of a pool room in New York. They promised would they would put it on me showing. You know, that's something. My brother is a musician, and uh, we were making this documentary on his life. That was another thing that they said for sure would make it that didn't. And basically, just they left out all your plugs. 
He seems yeah, like a cool guy, though. He is. Andrea. He's a great kid. Yeah, it wasn't him. Did you see his documentary? Room? I did. That was great. Wasn't he's it? he's very talented and yeah. really a super nice guy. I mean, he really yeah. is exactly the way he appears on the show. I think it was like the upper production or whatever. Yeah, but it was mostly just me appearing to be a way that I'm really not. You know, it's amazing yeah. how they can kind of do that because you say one thing sometimes almost like. In, yeah. Somewhat sarcastically or and in jest, just and all cut of that sudden, out. And right, then, it's like I'm a compulsive I mean, gambler. I perfect, can't. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, Eugene, what uh, did you think? In uh, watching it, I think at first, I, at first I liked it, but then you know it kind of didn't really give Nick the true representation of who he is. Yeah, I mean people who know him. All, all kinds I thought of neither part really of the him. show, me like partying wasn't who I am, and then yeah. me being miserable wasn't who I am. Yeah. That's just yeah. you kind of giving them were, what you want, it was what more, they want. It was yeah. very extreme, of the, you know. He's not really. But like it was good TV. I mean, yeah, they yeah, do what yeah. they do. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Well, obviously, like the big story of this final table is that you guys are such close friends, and I thought it'd be fun for us and to Umberto play. And Umberto made it. Of course, <laughs> that of course is the biggest story. Is Umberto <laughs> Brennis. Um, I heard that he had a whole case full of plastic sharks shipped in last night uh, in preparation. I don't even know if you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, get, he's just going to have the big shark hand puppet. <laughs> Whenever you guys go bust, you're going to go back to your room tonight. There's going to be a shark in each of your pillows. Oh, my um, God. So, yeah, you guys are, are pretty well known for being friends. So I thought it would be kind of fun if we played a game uh, where kind of like the newlywed game I call the newly paired game since I just have to jam a poker title in there somehow. And uh, what I did is I've come up with a series of questions that I've asked Eugene, questions about Nick, Nick, questions about Eugene. We will reveal the answers. Anyway, let's get some game show music going. Here we go. Our first question. Let me see what the questions were because I didn't write down for myself here. Nick, what is Eugene's favorite movie? I went with Gladiator. Nick says Gladiator. Is that correct? Uh, no. Eugene, what is your favorite movie? Show us the answer. What is your favorite movie? The Prophet. Oh, oh The Rob. Prophet. <laughs> oh, obvious. Wow. I haven't seen that. The Prophet. That's uh, the. Uh, that's new. Was I right? top French, five? I was top French five, movie? right? Gladiator? No. Really? No, it's not even wow. five. I don't give a fuck. Nice, nice friend. What yeah. did, <laughs> Eugene, what did you answer for Nick? I, I couldn't think of anything. I wrote the same thing because I know it's. In, I think it's in his top five. It is. It is. Okay, so we're going to give you half credit. What's the profit? Good the fellas. Good fellas. Oh, okay. That's true, yeah. Oh, the profit's a French movie, right? About yeah, a gangster. It's really awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I heard that Pulp Fiction is my favorite movie. You gotta see that. That's, the, that's one of my top five. Yeah, I love my Pulp Fiction. My dad's top five, too. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, this game is not about you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> God damn it. Up, Ryan. <laughs> By the way, Eugene took a very long time with his answers. He, was he did. Really yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. actually weird. I mean, he like, really wants to win. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Eugene, Eugene tanked. He like took out his iPhone. Yeah, he did. He's he like, did. favorite movie. All right, what's Nick going to guess? I need him to be wrong. <laughs> Too much game theory involved in this. Okay, next question, Eugene. We'll start with you. What was our next question here? It was... Uh, who is Nick's celebrity crush? Which celebrity would Nick most want to hook up with? He's probably done it already. I'm, I'm going to guess. I, I I'm going to guess Miley Cyrus. <laughs> By the way, I didn't she's know up one. there. She's <laughs> really? up there. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know this one. I put Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. What was your answer, Nick? I went with Shakira. Shakira. <laughs> nice. Wow. I would never guess that. Shakira. Nacho Barbero was just in here. He could probably hook you up. Yeah, he knows how to shake Shakira. it. How about uh, Eugene's celebrity crush, Nick? I wrote anyone with a big ass. Anyone with a big ass. <laughs> I'm willing. I'm willing to give Eugene credit. I'm willing to give Nick credit if he Oddly did listen enough, with a big ass. Anyone with a big ass, ding, ding, ding. No, but he is absolutely yeah. correct. Scarlet, a huge ass. <laughs> absolutely huge Johnson. ass. That's the only thing she has. She's for. gorgeous. <laughs> Sometimes she has an even huger ass. Occasionally, depending yeah. on when you catch her. Yeah, so, right. I, guess, I guess Nick gets a partial Nick, credit. It's yeah. Nicki yeah. Minaj. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, Nick. What is Eugene's favorite food? I went with steak. He said steak. Put steak down there. Eugene. He's slow rolling me by pretending he doesn't least, remember Nick's what he least wrote. Nick's least favorite, isn't it? Oh, favorite. Least. It's favorite food. Oh, Did I write least on one of them? Oh, my oh, bad. Oh, man. Okay. What is your favorite food? Oh, wow. My, That's okay. Well, I don't know. My favorite food. Come on, Huge. Wow. <laughs> Joe messed up here. <laughs> we have <laughs> favorite right. food on one and I least win. favorite on the other. It steak. is steak. All right, but Nick's very concerned that he gets the correct Are we screaming right now with the headphones on? Not really. We're fine. Yeah, we're fine. We're, we're having fun. <laughs> You're very it's okay to have fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Eugene, what is Nick's least favorite food? Uh, no, that wasn't on mine. It no, I know, favorite. but you can just answer. Oh, yeah. okay. Because uh, I mean, that's what he off the cuff This here. may have changed recently, but I know it used to be tomatoes. He says Nick hates tomatoes. I, I, I like them now. I eat them yeah, now. You, tomatoes yeah. are good. Wow, you changed. Yeah. I'll How give do you, you feel about one. sea urchin? I don't like sea urchin. I hate sea urchin. But <laughs> sea urchin. Wait, I, I love, love sea urchin. sushi. No, I don't. I hate it. Uni. No. I don't like, like it. You don't like it? I know the uni sea urchin <laughs> fucking <laughs> correlation. You, know, you like it. You always get it. No? I don't always get it, and I don't like it. See, this is what I proves what great friends you are is the bickering is, that happens This is turning afterward. into that, the newlywed game almost. I love <laughs> exactly. It. All right. What do we got here? Who's up next here? I hate sea urchin. A couple more questions. 
What is the most annoying thing about Nick, Eugene? What is the most <laughs> annoying thing about Nick? <laughs> he can be stubborn at times. He can be stubborn at times. Nick, what is the most annoying like, thing I about hate yourself? It when, I hate about it me, I wrote, I, out of my I wrote hand. being grumpy. Being grumpy, <laughs> stubborn. <laughs> I'll give him half credit. All right. We'll give him grumpy, stubborn. Similar category. What's the most annoying thing about Eugene? Oh, this Nick? was a long one. This took me. Up. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot to eliminate. Asking, an article. <laughs> asking the same question over and over. Oh yeah, that's good. Or maybe taking too long to fill out a simple survey. Yeah, that would yeah. be being indecisive. He has yeah. to get credit for that, even though I didn't write that in. But he has to. Get yeah. Credit. Well, what, what is it? What, what did you it? write? I didn't know. I, wrote, I, wrote, I laughed too much. <laughs> Wow, I those laughed. Are, too much. Those are cheating. not the same. <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying to be around such a fucking happy guy. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, we got one poker-related question. Nick, how much has Eugene won in live tournaments? I said four point five million. Four point five million. No what is the correct is answer? I think it's five. Uh, really? Five. Wow. I'll give you that. Within a half a million, I think is fair. That's we'll we'll high. give you that. Eugene, uh, how much has Nick won lifetime? I don't know. I wrote five million too. I, don't Ooh, know. I think it's a little more than that, isn't it? Didn't I think you win it's like less. I think it's right around four point five million. You say oh, four point okay. five for yourself. It doesn't matter what the correct answer is. Is what you said about yourself. He's within half a million. He's correct on that one too. Then nice. We both get a half a point for that shit. I think <laughs> I think they Google themselves a lot, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, finally, Eugene. What is the biggest leak in Nick's game? Uh, sometimes he has a lack of interest. Lack of interest, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm, what a, what I just wrote one, one word. Yeah, I'm afraid I can't give you credit for that. Nick uh, Nick thinks the biggest leak in his game is tilt. Tilt. <laughs> Tilting. Nick, what is the biggest Full leak tilt. in, in yeah. Eugene's Full game? Blank I wrote the biggest net. leak in Eugene's game is being so good that he confuses people. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you? I don't know. What I wrote just staying focused. Okay. Well, Wait, there's, let me there's, get a quarter there's point. scribbles that, here. He was starting to write. I'm way too good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to award a quarter point. I'm going to declare you guys both winners in this game because unfortunately only one of you can win this event here. I love that he. <laughs> I love that he literally had three ideas that he started and scribbled all three out. You know they're all. By the way, it's it's it's, it's twelve fifty four right now. That's right. You guys got to get out of here. Absolutely. Good luck in the tournament, guys. Thanks for stopping right, by. Yeah, Thank you. This nice was meeting you guys. Nice to meet Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a shame you both can't win. <laughs> yeah. Poker Road Radio. Yeah, heads up. That would we be a big story. Yeah. Back right. after nice this. Guys. Welcome back to Poker Road Radio, brought to you by Tournament Welcome Poker back. Edge. <laughs> Professional MTT training from the top live and online pros. We are just about out of time here, but we skipped over it yesterday, and I don't want to skip it for now. John Vuong, can we get the Poker News intro, buddy? I know I'm, th- I'm springing it on you. He's scrambling. That kidney stone's getting in the way. And bringing you the biggest stories. Or, well, whatever we could find 10 minutes before the show. Poker news. Not really news at all at this point, but uh, Prahlad Friedman has signed with Ultimate Bet, which is a shock yeah. to the poker world for many <laughs> reasons. Sort of, even though it got leaked a week earlier. Right. <laughs> it, it, it was a shock. Now we're still pretending to be it's in like shock. The Kanye album. Everyone's commented on it. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's shocking in many ways that a lot of people feel like it's shocking that any pro would sign with Ultimate Bet, first of all, but specifically a guy like Prahlad who has spoken out against the establishment and corporations, and I believe he said in the past that he would not sign with any company. Didn't they cheat him out of like a million bucks? Yeah, and he got his money back. It was an, He has an interesting theory that you can read on Bluff Magazine. Yes, yeah, so I think Bluff got the first We got the first interview, interview. and uh, props to my boss, Lance Bradley, for doing a really good job. That Was this like three years ago or whatever? No, this was uh, yesterday. Like a, like a days couple ago, days ago. Two days, days ago, ago. We, we had an interview up. His thought is, you know, they righted their wrongs by paying me back and making that effort, and I haven't seen other sites do that. And in Prahlad's defense, that has been his song and dance for a while. Yeah. I interviewed him over a year ago, I want to say, at LAPC, where he final, or Legends of Poker, I think. Yeah, Legends he, of Poker. Where he final table, and I asked him about it. I said, hey, are you mad? Are you pissed? Are you, he's like, whatever, man. Let well, bygones be bygones. They paid us back. Yeah, well, you can't say you're mad if you're signing with someone. He's probably really pissed and just getting paid a lot of money by UB. No, but that's, what, no, that's what I'm he, saying. He felt well like over he a year ago, he said, he said the same thing. And back. he's a pretty happy-loving guy, too. He's probably just like, whatever. That, yeah, I mean, that, that has yeah. been his attitude for a yeah. long time. So in, in his defense, I will give him that. He's not a guy that – now, he does seem to be sort of flip-flopping a little bit on the whole corporation thing and the fact that he said he would never sign with a site. Yeah, yeah. And, and he had tweeted like a month ago or a month and a half ago thinking about it, what do you all think, and got people's feedback. And 
one of the other reasons he was saying in the interview, which seriously, I'm, I know I do the shameless plug, but this was really, really good. No, of course. Everyone should read. go to Bluff. Is it on the, on the it's website? On, it's on the website. It's great. Go to bluffmagazine.com and check out um, the, uh, the interview. Although Kudos it seems like Bluff. most people have seen it at this point in time. He was also saying what he liked about UB was that Full Tilt and Poker Stars have very long slates of pros, mm-hmm. and here was a chance for him to take a very active role yeah. in the company, in mar- in the marketing of himself, and in doing things with his money, and like charity and that sort of thing. What? Yeah, one great thing about UB for sure is that they're definitely trying to rebrand their image, which is good. I mean, you always have to be uh, staying fresh, and they got rid of Vanny Duke and Phil Humuth, and... Signing someone like Prahlad is going to be great for them, I think. Prahlad's a very interesting, charismatic, great, like, well-respected poker player, and it's, I mean, he's definitely a great addition. And I, myself, I've worked for UB, I, you know, when they, and the thing that I really liked about UB at the time, and I and I hope that all the things they say are true about their, their cheaters being gone and its different management and all that, I, I really don't know. I've never been to their offices. I don't know anything about it, but... Uh, my rationale was like, look, we have an online poker site right now that's willing to spend money to improve the overall landscape of poker. Yeah, they wanted to put a poker show out there that was in, you know, that uh, was sort of like a sports center for poker. And I was like, this is great for poker. And you be also probably by virtue of the fact that they can't afford to be, they also don't have that strict party line that the other sites have, where Poker Stars doesn't want to feel it affiliate themselves with Full Tilt and Full Tilt doesn't want to affiliate yeah, themselves they with Poker took Stars. On Liv Bury and And they you know when we were on Poker Tonight they they said whoever whatever guests want to come on the show, we'll have them on the show. We will have Poker Stars guests. We'll have Full Tilt guests and like I said, you know, they probably can't afford to make it exclusive to UB. Mm-hmm. But you know, and that's something that Joe Seabach, when he went over to UB, had the, the same thing. Like, I want to do things that are good for poker and I want everyone to get along and you know, I do I do like that aspect of it as well. Yeah. Definitely you know, uh, they deserve some respect for for that. Do you think now, d- did Lance ask Prahlad the tough questions? Did he? I think that he was he was totally fair and asked all the questions that that people want to hear. You have your reaction on on Phil and Annie leaving, how that influenced his decision, and you've got you know you kind of got cheated out of money. What's the deal with that? It's it's a lengthy one, and I I think that he didn't pull any punches at all. Obviously, he's my boss, so... Right, of course, so you don't really want to talk <laughs> about what that interview was. Genuinely, it was it was really good. You know, and I, I'm hopeful, as always, when these things happen, that, uh, you know, hopefully Prolod Friedman does do some good, and hopefully, you know, I would imagine that whatever figure it is they gave him has to be ridiculous um, to get someone to, to flip-flop. Yeah. And, you know, he, he is a charitable guy, and he is a fun guy, so hopefully we will see some good really things good come out of this. he's really good at freestyling. That's you know right. That? Yeah, he can battle rap with the yeah, best of them. He can probably afford a really, really expensive producer at this I, point. I would love to battle rap Prahlad Friedman sometime. Oh That'd be God. awesome. We little no, to, little known a... fact. Little known fact. When I have a few drinks, favorite thing ever is just rhyme. Yeah, battle rap. Rhyme and rhythm. Here's what I yeah, try to do. If I have a few r- drinks with Ryan D'Angelo this week, oh, I will man. bring a recorder out with me, and we'll see what kind of raps he can come up with. This right. should we'll be a Poker show. Road video blog series. Rhyme and rhythm with Ryan D'Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> we have I Ryan cannot, go learn to I tango. I cannot follow we Jeff have... Matson's footsteps. He is... Oh my god, I do have a video <laughs> of me battle rapping <laughs> Jeff Benson. It was so much fun. This is so why I love fun. Ryan, is that you are still like a poker fan in he's addition a fan to and being also, a poker He's not player. one of those guys, like, th- that, what I love about Ryan is he's not like, oh, I did this battle rap, but I, like, don't play it. Or don't, I don't want anyone to know about yeah. it. He's like, cool, man, it's hilarious. <laughs> like, play it. He's like, he, he does not have a lot of, uh, he, his embarrassment factor is very, no, very but low. This was actually hilarious because me and Jeff Madsen were. We were wasted, and I just crushed his soul. And this exists. <laughs> this, exists uh, this exists on video somewhere. Yeah, I, it might be on my phone. I think maybe. I, yeah, yeah. I can't. Uh, we'll, we'll see, see if we can, we can track dig down. that. Dig that up. Play it that was on hilarious. Tomorrow show. Now, before we uh, bring it to the bridge here, as they say, uh, Ryan also happens to be. Uh, in agreement with me that later today here at the Speaking PCA, speaking of Madsen and conspiracy that's theories, right, yeah. when they unveil Isildur one, that it is not going to be Victor Blom. Yeah, I mean it's a whole ruse. Like, oh yeah, they've they've probably been playing this the whole time. They're like, two years <laughs> ago, Blom feels like I'm leaving. Blah blah blah. 
I think it's more than a coincidence that Phil Hellmuth just happens to leave Ultimate Bet two weeks before Isildur is revealed. Come on now. I mean, he's beating all the best players in the world. The best player in the world. He is the absolute best player in the world. I will true. give you that. So Isildur is Phil Hellmuth. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan D'Angelo also, by the way, believes that the moon landings were faked. Yep. 9-11 was an inside job. I actually do believe that. And that Tupac is still alive. Oh, uh, i got to have you and Matt's not together. I love to- that that's the one that he's like, let's not talk crazy. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> Tupac's dead. Yeah, t- oh, Tupac is rest actually in, dead. Rest in no, peace. he's not. You believe Tupac's alive. Tupac's alive. Wow, we're really learning things about everyone here on Poker Road Radio. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is all the time we've got for today's episode. I'd like to thank our guests, Nick Schulman and Eugene Kachlov. Thanks very much, guys, for stopping by. For Jessica Wellman, check out our articles at bluffmagazine.com or just pick up Bluff Magazine in your local newsstand. Thanks, buddy. For Ryan D'Angelo, for John Vuong, the Vuonger over here. Freestyle videos coming soon. And for everyone else traveling down the old Poker Road, this is Joe Stapleton saying, always take the best of it. I, I almost just screamed out, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.